Hello everyone, welcome to the February 2024 net worth video. My overall net worth is $547,927.27. That's an increase of $28,040.65 from the prior month. So very, very happy about those results. Let's take it all the way from the top. Bank of America checking account, the balance was $4,000. $753.35. That's a decrease of $123.16. This amount is really insignificant. What I do it every month is I front load my Bank of America checking account with the funds that I will need for the prior month, or sorry, for the next month. So in this case, this balance here is really to cover all the expenses of March of 2024. So it, it will just fluctuate because it depends on when the money gets transferred in. There might be other things in process. So that's why I say the decrease is really insignificant there. And I use my Bank of America checking account for all of my all expenses that, that I incur for the month. I don't use credit cards or anything like that. I just pull it from cash. Um, and that's how I manage all of my expenses. My Ally Bank Savings account balance on that is $6,960.28. That's an increase of $1,408.92. The reason for this increase is because I am working on saving up a $15,000 emergency fund. So I have been putting a lot more money into my Ally Savings account to work towards that goal. Now, all the money here is not just for my emergency fund, but the majority of it is. So for instance, I believe like 800 of this balance is money that I have in my daughter that I have allocated to taking care of expenses um, for my daughter. But uh, the majority, again, will be the emergency fund once I'm able to save up that um, $15,000. Now, $15,000 for me will cover three months of emergency. My ultimate goal is to save up one year of emergency fund, which would be $60,000 for me, but that's more of a very long-term goal. It will take me several years to get there, but I'm just starting with the first $15,000 to begin with for the year of 2024. If you want to follow that journey, I do make weekly videos just tracking and showing you all the deposits that I put in to work towards the first $15,000 goal. Okay, moving on to 401k, balance was $228,530.37. That's an increase of $14,222.04 from the prior month. Now, this is a huge increase. I do contribute 15% of my salary towards my 401k every month. So for the month of February, I put in a total of two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars if i'm not mistaken so a little under three thousand dollars so as you can see here the overwhelming majority of this increase is just from market growth which i am just so so happy about and have no complaints about so yeah the stock market performed well in the month of february my 401k is 100% invested into the S&P 500, and so is my other um, investment account. So I'm just going with investments that I feel good about, that have a strong, solid um, track record, and I'm only doing ETFs. I'm not doing any single stock investing. So 401k is 100% in S&P um, 500. Now, Something exciting will be happening next month. So in March, when I give that net worth update, and that's because I will be able to max my 401k in March, which would be something new for me. Not that I haven't maxed my 401k before, but that I've maxed it so early. Typically, I would have to take the entire year to max the 401k, but finances so far has been really good in 2024. So I will be able to max my 401k from my year end bonus that will get paid out 
in March. So that's very, very exciting for me to, to look forward to. So I'll show you all the details as usual um, next month when that happens. So that's going to be a pretty significant jump in March because the contribution limit for the 401k for 2024 is 23,000. Of course, you can make, I believe, like after tax contribution, but my income is not, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm working towards it. Um, but that $23,000 limit um, will be maxed. And so far, I've contributed a little over 5000 So that's going to be about, yeah, about $17,800 that will be going into the 401k just in the month of March. So that's, that's going to be, again, a, a big difference. And I'm really, really excited and looking forward to that. Okay, moving on to the Roth IRA. That balance is $28,234.76. That's an increase of $1,317.90. This is all for market growth because I haven't put anything in my Roth IRA from March of 2023. And that's because I maxed it out in March of 2023 with my year-end bonus at that time. So it's really good to see again that the market performed well. And as a result, my Roth IRA performed well as well. So what, I ha what I'm invested in my Roth IRA, it's S&P 500. I do have some SEHD in there. And then I do have the total stock market um, in there as well. And the plan is to also max my 401k, not my 401k, well, I will be maxing the 401k, but it's also to max out the Roth IRA in the month of March, similar to what I did um, last year. So for 2024, the max amount is 7000 So there will be a really nice increase um, in the month of March for the Roth IRA as well. Brokerage account balance is $110,219.48. That's an increase of $6,273.73. Now, the overwhelming majority of this is just growth in the market because for the month of February, I only put in a little over $2,500. So again, it's just, it's just all market growth, which is just so awesome and so wonderful. And I know for the brokerage account, once I had hit that 100K mark, it was a little bit demotivating because it felt like I was so far away from the next milestone, which in my head was that I'm going to do like 25K increments in terms of milestones. So I was thinking the next milestone would be like 125K for the brokerage account. And it felt so, so far away when I just broke 100,000. But now that I'm at 110,000, it just feels a lot more realistic uh, in terms of hitting one one twenty five as the next goal for the for the brokerage portfolio, and for my brokerage account, I'm invested in S and P five hundred and SCHD. HSA is balance is twenty thousand eight hundred and seventy seven dollars and twenty seven cents. That's an increase of one thousand eight hundred and seventy nine dollars and forty two cents. HSA is invested 100% in the S&P 500. Um, I did contribute through my employer about a little over $500 into the HSA. That's what I contribute about every single month um, into the HSA. But it went up $1,879.42. So again, that's all market growth, or not all of it, a little over a thousand is market growth, and just loving to see the balance keep on going. HSA has that triple tax advantage, um, where you put the money in tax free, um, and then you can it grows tax free as well, um, and then you can withdraw it for qualified medical expenses, um, tax free. But HSA for me. I view it more as a healthcare like investment account. So I don't tap my HSA for any healthcare expenses. If something is needed for my daughter um, or myself, I just cash flow it from my paycheck. Now, yes, yeah, so I just plan to just leave this HSA alone and keep on contributing every single month. 
as long as I'm able to, as long as I'm I'm employed and able to earn money, <laughs> I plan to just keep on putting money to this HSA and just letting it sit and grow. And of course, unfortunately, healthcare is one of those areas in life, especially in the United States of America, where you can't afford it and there is huge, huge cost around it. So I almost feel like this HSA balance can't get high enough. I would love for like when I retire for this balance to be like $100,000, which is still, still wouldn't be enough money probably to take care of all the health expenses I would have later in life and my daughter as well. Abel, the balance on that account is $33,549.79. I referenced my daughter a couple times already, but this account is hers. Able stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience, and it's an investment slash checking account for individuals with disability. And given my daughter does have a severe disability that at, at the moment looks like she will require 20, uh, 24-hour care for her lifetime, it's really important for me to save and invest for her future to help take care of her. So this ABLE account can, um, I'm using it right now as purely as an investment account, but I could have also leveraged as a checking account or both. I could do a combination of investing some of it, keeping some of it in a checking account to pay for any expenses towards that goes towards the care of my daughter. So housing, food, transportation, so anything um, this account can be be leveraged for and there's no you don't have to pay any taxes on on the growth. But again, I'm using this more as a long-term investment account for her. So I don't use her ABLE account for any expenses. So I just cash flow all expenses for her from my paycheck. But her ABLE account is going to be, or it is part of a bigger estate plan that I plan to put together in the year 2025 just to make sure that she's set up for success. So I do plan to set up a special needs trust that in short, all of these assets that I just went through um, with you, including my home, um, will all get routed to the trust. So upon my death, um, all of my assets will then just go towards her and taking care of her for her lifetime which I am really, really happy about, and it makes me feel good. So that's going to get in place officially in the year 2025. Setting up a trust is several thousands of dollars, and I live in New York City, so it's probably going to run me five to $7,000 to get it set up, but definitely worth it, and it's something that I will be doing. Um, you know, pending, I still get a bonus. Um, next year, we'll be doing with, with the bonus. But that's an increase of $1,585.17 from the prior month. The overwhelming majority of this is, is growth. I think I've put in maybe a little over $400 into the ABLE account for the month of February. Um, so just happy, most ecstatic to see this balance going up. And then last, in terms of my assets, I have my home. This is the purchase price, so I'm just keeping it that keeping it at that value for the entire year of 2024 at four hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. Now this is a co-op um, apartment that I bought, so it's not a single-family home in New York City. Is that would be I don't know how many millions of dollars, but really, really love um, my home and my daughter and I feel very comfortable here. So because I'm keeping the value the same, the difference from the prior month is zero. So my overall asset value for February of 2024 is $868,125.30. That is an increase of $26,564.02 from the prior month. So that's awesome. Now, moving on to my liabilities, I just have one, my mortgage. I mentioned before, I don't use credit cards or I don't have like a car loan. Or, I don't believe in debt overall. I'm definitely on the same plan as Dave Ramsey with the no debt mentality. So if I'm buying anything, I pay cash with it. I know a lot of folks um, love the points and like kind of play that points game. I don't care about points. It's 
if I can't pay for it in cash, I, I can't afford it. That's just the way I look at it. So um, I, for that reason, uh, I just have my mortgage. So the balance on the mortgage for February is $320,198.03. That is a decrease of $1,476.63 from the prior month. Now, the reason for this decrease is that I am also focused on paying off my mortgage as early as possible. It is an overwhelming amount <laughs> that I have to pay off by myself. So it can feel a bit like, uh, eating an elephant, <laughs> but I am trying the best I can every month to put extra money towards my mortgage because based off the monthly payment that's required for my mortgage, only about $300 goes towards the actual principal. And we all know with a mortgage to begin in, just the overwhelming majority of your payments goes towards interest. So out of the $1,473 that I paid in uh in that that reduced the principal of the mortgage three hundred dollars of that came from the monthly payment the rest is just extra payments that i put um towards it um throughout the month so it's really important to me to try to pay off this mortgage as soon as i can um because I, I don't like debt I, I don't like it i don't like it i want to get rid of it um asap so I'm trying the best that I can. Now, is it my number one financial goal and priority? No. I would say, at least for the year 2024, the major, the main investment goal is more on my um, my brokerage account. Like trying, like I would love, for instance, at the end of the year to get the brokerage account to like 150,000. So that is where like I would say the overwhelming majority of my money is going or will go for this year, but I am putting extra money again to the to the mortgage as I can because it's also important. Okay, so again, the um so the total liability $320,198.03. So if we take my total assets of 868125.30 um, and minus my liabilities of 320,198.03 that's what brings the net worth to $547.927.27 and a recap that's an increase of $28,040.65 so I know that was a lot of, of information for the February 2024 net worth, but I think it's really important to explain what is happening, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling um, as these numbers um, change, whether that's going up or going down, because I know when I watch other people's net worth videos, I really enjoy getting some of the historical or just some just details in terms of like why certain assets or li our liabilities are going up and down um, versus folks just kind of reading numbers. It doesn't really tell the story. So hopefully that was um, helpful for you. And I'll catch you in the March 2024 net worth video. That's going to be a huge one. Like I mentioned, I'm so excited and looking forward to it. And let me know how your net worth went for the month of February. Were you able to see a lot of growth in your investment portfolios, just given how great the stock market did, um, especially for some of the folks who invest in crypto? I don't invest in crypto, but uh, I believe, right, it's back at all time highs. So I would love to hear how your um, net worth uh, changed um, in the month of February. OK, I'll catch you next month. Bye.